verse 2, it says these words. It says, The Lord is my rock. He is my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold. Amen. Let's worship and celebrate His name here this morning. Praise be your name, Jesus. Get to worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When I see the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see. Almighty fortress, hallelujah, you know. 
mountains fall like lightning And I saw the darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Oh, I believe in signs and wonders And I have resurrection power
love to welcome, a people who love to dive into the Word of God, and you're a people with purpose, and you're a people that God has a specific plan in mind. And when we ask Him, and when we sit at His feet and we listen, and He begins to reveal those things to us, it is an amazing it is an amazing community to be a part of. Would you agree with that this morning? Yeah. I would agree with that. So um, hope you had a wonderful week this week. Um, we have just a few announcements for this coming upcoming Sunday, a week from today. If you are interested in being a part of our welcome team or to be an usher, um, because we are going to begin to pass the plate again, okay? Um, and we need ushers to help people find their seats and, and to be extra smiling faces to be helpful during, during our morning service. If you are interested in being a part of one or both of those teams by chance, we're going to have a short meeting next Sunday. Uh, I believe that's January 22nd, immediately following our worship service right here in the sanctuary. And Pastor and I will be leading that meeting um, to help you guys get acclimated. We just have some things that we want to share about the vision uh, for our welcome team and ushers. And um, if you want to be a part of that, we invite you to stay next Sunday um, for that short meeting, probably about 15, 20 minutes. Um, not very long. We won't take too much of your time, but we definitely want to include any and every one of you who want to be a part of that team. Giving. What a great opportunity it is. I can share numerous, countless stories of how God has blessed us in the overflow, but how God has blessed us in the lean times too, right? When we are obedient to what he's asked us to do in his word, to give back just a small portion of all the things that he's blessed us with in life. And for tithing, um, offering, for giving here at Northside, there's three ways you can do that. Through the mail. Can send your check through the mail. You can do it online, or you can, beginning in the next few weeks, as we pass the plate, place your offering in the plate, or the plates are also in the back by the sound room um, that you can um, put your tithes and offerings in there as well. This morning, there's one more minor announcement, and Aaron doesn't know about it, but today is his birthday. So, I am so thankful that he was born. I'm so thankful that he was born. I'm thankful for who God has created him to be, and I'm so thankful that my husband, my pastor, um, is not finishing unraveling and unwrapping the gifts that God has given him, because there's still more, right? We just sing about that. If I'm not dead, then you're not done, right? There's still more, and the best is possibly yet to come for us, so I'm um, just seeking his face. I'm thankful that we have a pastor and that I have a husband who, who does that. I love you. Happy birthday. Yeah, I get to do that because I have the mic. So, um, yeah, we want to continue our time of worship. So, you, will you please stand, um, stand with us. Hey, Matt. Um, it's, it's, it's not by coincidence um, that we're getting ready to sing this next song called Living Hope. Um, Emma and I had the privilege of attending a conference this past week for children's pastors and children's ministry leaders. And um, they talked about, for the entire week, we talked about unending hope, right? Because if we are, um, if we are holding on to the hope in Jesus Christ, it never ends. Our hope never has to end. And the word that they brought up was a Hebrew word, Brother Sam. Um, and I, you'll have to correct me afterwards if I'm not saying this correctly, but tikva is the Hebrew word for hope. And really what it stands for, what it means, is it's a cord. You know, we know about the story of Rahab and how she dropped down that scarlet cord, that rope for her family. It was out of hope. It was out of unending hope that she had for her family that they would come to know the Lord as their Savior. And this morning, we have that same opportunity to grab a hold of that, that cord, that unending hope that he offers us each and every day, each and every day. So as we sing these words, maybe these words are new to you, maybe they're not. But think about the unending hope that our Savior gives us in knowing him, simply just in knowing him. 
Let's sing together.
take on that spiritual warfare upon ourselves because it's when our spirit man joins with your spirit Lord that we see things take place we think, see things happen and we can know and claim for ourselves in victory that you have overseen us and that you are overseeing us Father we do need you Every single hour, every single minute of every single day. Yes. Yes. We know with you all things are possible. And this morning, Father, as we continue our worship, as, as our shepherd comes, he doesn't claim to be the shepherd. He likes to say that he's the under-shepherd. Yes. Father, I pray that the ways that you have spoken to him throughout this week are clear and evident in the message that he has to deliver. And Father, we'll be able to take those nuggets of truth with us and that they won't just be good words, something that we hear and listen to and can check off our list for the week. 
but God, they will bring transformation. Yes. They will change us. Thank you. Because, God, we need you. Oh, yeah. And what we need of you right now is just not enough. We need more. What we heard yesterday from you is not enough. We need more. We need a fresh encounter with you today. Yes. So, Jesus, as we sit and we quiet ourselves, and we listen, and we respond, we need to respond to what we hear. That's a true follower, a true disciple, or disciple of Christ is when we hear it, and then we respond to it. So, God, help us to be attuned to your voice this morning. Help us as your sheep to recognize you and all the things that you want to do. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise because that is what you deserve. preparation for the word this morning. Yes, as our little people are exiting. All those that are fifth grade and under, if you want to if you want to exit out the back doors, you can. You guys are going to have an amazing time together, worshiping together and learning about Jesus. Having a snack, amen. Some of them are going to be playing Play-Doh and having a great time together. But as they are being prepared to receive those littles. I know you all know this song. Um, and maybe not. Maybe you just want to close your eyes and just allow these words to be sung over you. But would you sing these words with me just real quick? I know I'm going off script a little bit. Boys in the back, thanks so much. I appreciate that. But I'll help you. It goes like this. It goes, I love you, Lord. And I lift my hands. And I live Help us not to be 
a Martha and help us not to be so consumed by all the things that have to be done but oh Jesus we sit at your feet as Mary did God hopefully I got those right I don't think I mixed those up but help us to sit at your feet and say we're in the right spot right now for this season we need to hear from you Jesus so Lord we worship you we praise your holy name we exalt your name we magnify your name Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and together everyone said as a family, amen, 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 which simply means, and so be it, and so be it. There's a real problem when you have a former worship pastor that leads worship, he just can't get off the piano, so there you go. Um, and I am not the worship pastor here, I'm simply the lead worshiper here, and so I, thanks for joining me in my worship this morning, and um, I, I got stuck on those songs, Lord, I Need You. I hope that those songs just, I hope, you know when you start singing a song and it gets stuck in your head and you just can't get it out? I hope that's the one that gets stuck in every one of your heads this morning. Lord, I need you, that we just declare, those are nice words, but they're, they can be nice words or they can be transformative words. I want the transformative words. God, I need you. Without you, I am nothing, but with you, all things, help me are possible. <clears throat> Amen. I didn't preach yet. Dang. As I was thinking this week and processing through some things, and um, sometimes, I know the enemy doesn't come after you all and plant in things <laughs> near minds, but just sometimes for me, I was thinking, I wonder why other people don't come to church. I wonder why people struggle with acknowledging and seeking and receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. What is that, God? And then quickly the Spirit said, well, there are things in your life that you're not receiving completely from me. I wasn't asking about me, God. I was asking about them. So I don't need your help with that. But um, So as I was processing through those things and, and the Spirit was just dealing with me on some things, I turned, when you, don't, when you have a question and you don't know the answer, what do you do? You turn to Google. And so I... Asked a question on the internet, on Google. Um, why don't people attend church, Jesus? I didn't put the Jesus part in there. But this was the newest um, research that I could find from March of 2022. So I know it's almost a year old. But um, I promise we'll get to um, where we're going. I, I really do promise. But I want you to hear some of these things. Because these may be some things that you're hearing in your own friends and family's lives. And if you are, first of all, let me say this to you. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry that um, sometimes um, the church, and I'm not saying uh, Northside or any church that you've ever attended, but I'm saying the church globally has done sometimes a very poor job of modeling who Jesus is. Amen? Amen. And so therefore, people would say, why would I want to go be a part of that? You know? It's probably a little safer and better, and people don't speak to me like that at Walmart. Huh. So, but here, according to the Pew Research Center and the Barna uh, group, there are the top seven, which at least it's a good biblical number in seven. These are the top seven reasons that people don't attend church. Now, you may chuckle at some of these. Um, hopefully, some of these will um, just remind us of why we do what we do and who we serve. But here they are. The number one, and these are actually in order. And be thinking about these because I'm going to come back and reference one of them. Number one, they think church is irrelevant. Those surveyed said that they practice their faith in other ways. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but there is one that said, I am the way, I think, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father. What's the next word? Except through me or by me. That's number one. Number two, whew, hear me. Hear me clearly, family, leaders, church. If you are ordained pastors in here, even if you're not an ordained pastor and you are a, a member of this congregation and have been here for many, many years, hear me in this. Number two, the church and its leaders are nothing but a, punch, a bunch of hypocrites and moral failures. That's... Being pulled, people are saying that. I'm just saying to you, church, we have got to be 
salt and light. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the truth. We'll come back to that one. Number three, they feel God is missing in the church. <laughs> Jesus, help us please with that one. Of all places God is missing is in the church. Number four, they feel that legitimate doubt is prohibited. What do I mean by that? In other words, if they don't have everything to, together, then they shouldn't come. Mm. I, I can see how that would be valid. Mm. I don't have everything together. God's not going to want this mess. Mm. So I need to probably clean myself up and so that I can come, but that day never comes. Does mm. it? Number five. Was that number four? Yeah. Number five. Mm. Very similar to another one, but they don't learn about God or Jesus. You go to church, but you don't learn about God or Jesus? So is that because it's not being preached or proclaimed or talked about? Or you're just not receiving it? Could be both of them. Which, man, that's, that's harsh. Number six, they don't gain any significant or new insights about faith. I hope that when you leave this place, whoever is, is, is on this um, podium, that you walk away going, God, I don't know if I agree with that, but because it came for your word, it must be right, so that must mean I'm wrong, and so please, Jesus, change me so that I can be more like you and not more like myself. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. I hope that those words, the words that are spoken from this place, are, tra are transforming to your life. I hope you go home and challenge them. I hope you don't believe everything that's said from this pulpit. God, is that really what it says in your word? Mm -hmm. Challenge that. Challenge that. That's right. And then the last thing, and I think this is so important, this is people... Why they don't go to church anymore. They have trouble finding community. Mm. Now, I scratch my head on that because one of the things that the Church of God touts is that we are what? The family of... The family? The family? And people are saying, I don't find any community. Now, I, I know you can go get a cup of coffee and get a donut or whatever and that makes you feel like community. But a community is a sense of longing. I want yes. to be there. That's right. Yes. I want to be there. That's right. Yes. Um, there, was, there was a couple that we knew early in our ministry that, and I was always there very early, but they were there before me because they could not wait for the doors to open. So the doors weren't open, so we're just going to stand there and wait for somebody to come and open them. Where's that at? Where's that at? Where is your alarm? It's supposed to go off at 6, but you wake up at 5.30, but instead of just waking up and diving into Jesus' word, you get lost in Facebook. Sorry, I didn't say Facebook, did I? But you get lost in other things that are going on in the day. You skip your devotions, and then you go in through your day, and then that's how you start your day. It's just whatever. Yes. Versus being started with Jesus. Here I am. What do you have for me? Amen. I was talking to Bishop Evans right before church, and i got to tell you this morning, much like many Sunday mornings, but today, the enemy just has been bombarding me with thoughts and, mm. and discouragement, and so Bishop would tell me he had a friend, old boy, big boy, but he woke up every morning, he had suspenders when suspenders were still needed to hold up your pants and not for style, but he got up every morning and he slapped them suspenders. <laughs> Satan, what you got for me today? Wow, where is that at? Where's that tenacity? God, what God, what do you have for me today? Because I know that the enemy didn't sleep. And he's going to be coming after me. So God, what do you have for me today? I, I will say this. All of those things that we read about, those, those seven things that people are discouraged about in church, some of them are valid. We have to validate them. Why does someone feel that they can't bring their doubt into the church? Of all places, the church. Mm -hmm. Why is it they don't, that, that they don't feel that God is being spoken about in the church? So I, I can hear some of those things, and I understand and I want to validate some of those things. But at the same time, I also remember what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2.12, where it says what? Work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Well, then get in the Word and figure it out. Well, it doesn't tell me in the Word. Then Bible, get a Bible commentary. Now, don't put your trust in your Bible commentary, but find out why. God, what is it? What is it? This is so far off my sermon, it's not even funny. This is awesome. <laughs> Last week, we started a series called Shape Up. And so, 
I know in the midst of revolu revolutions, resolutions and resolve, we've talked a little bit about that, and I'm sure some people are doing the whole um, health thing, and I'm going to eat better this New Year's. Um, maybe you only ate better for New Year's Day, and then January 2nd, you'll go back to eating what, the way you were, I don't know. But, uh, or I'm going to exercise more, or you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but God is asking, is asking us to shape up, and I love the, the bottom. Daryl, do we have that? That first slide there just says shape up and then there's something underneath it. It's all good. It's something about spiritual formation. That God is wanting to form us and shape us. Remember we talked last week about clay. When we're, we're the potter in, in, the, in the potter's hand, um, as the clay, man, he molds us and he shapes us into what he would have us to be. So we're going to continue that series this morning. And if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 6. No, it's not a repeat of last week. We're going to be in a different part of Matthew chapter 6. But Matthew chapter 6, there may be a Bible in front of you, um, in the, the chair in front of you, or you can uh, scoot over next to somebody else and sit with them or pull it up on your app uh, as well. But Matthew chapter 6, very first book in the New Testament. Last week we talked about prayer in verses 5 through 15. How was that? How would that go this week? Um, but this week we're going to be simply talking about and focusing on the first four verses in Matthew chapter 6. So when you got that, say, Pastor, I'm ready. Good, good. Remember that this Matthew 6 is sitting right smack in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, side note, not a side plug. I don't get anything for this. But I know The Chosen has series 3 out. I don't know if any of you all have seen um, the beginning. I think it's in um, episode 3. Or episode 1, they start and Jesus starts to begin to un pack the whole Sermon on the Mount thing, and it's, it's amazing. But as you watch through that, um, you see where Jesus begins to interact now on the disciples more on a personal level. And, um, you know, Jesus is always saying the kingdom of God is near, the kingdom of God is near. Of course, at that point, the kingdom of God was there because he was in person. But we see that Matthew 6 is kind of stuck right in the middle of this Sermon on the Mount. In, in chapter 5, Jesus talks about the Beatitudes. Man, I hate that chapter, but anyways. He talks about the Beatitudes. He talks about salt and light. He talks about anger. He talks about lust. He talks about divorce. He talks about vows. He talks about revenge. And then we get to the beginning of chapter 6. And so here we go, Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 1. And it says, be careful. Now, in my Bible, all of these words are in red. And they probably are in yours as well. So that just says that Jesus is speaking these words. So be careful, Jesus said. Not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Man, I love this verse. Mm. And then your Father, hallelujah, we have a Father who loves us. Amen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. I'm going to give you the whole synopsis of my sermon right now in this next, in this next slide. It sums up everything, and then we'll just unpack everything else. But here it is, the whole thing. It's a hard issue. It's a hard issue. Amen. Right? Yes. I know as a heart issue, meaning our spiritual heart, maybe not necessarily our physical heart. Yes, amen. But it breaks up, why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Amen. Talking about shaping up, if you're exercising, listen to this, and your heart is not right, mm -hmm. your physical heart, mm -hmm. you're not going to be exercising very long, mm -hmm. or will you? Yes. What happens when you talk about the spiritual heart? Mm -hmm. The same as for our spiritual heart. Is my serving or my giving so that others will notice? Jesus. Or is it because I must be, as Paul says, I'm compelled to be mm. obedient to what God has said? Mm. What's the intent of my heart? It's a heart <coughs> issue. So it's interesting that in verse 1, um, Jesus says these words, and, and I, um, the very first words there, he says, be careful. Yes. I wonder, 
That, that should be a red flag for us. When Jesus says the words, be careful, we probably should be careful. Amen. Now, Apostle Paul, he says, be careful. I beseech you, brethren, as some versions say, you know, all those kind of things. We probably listen. But if Jesus says, be careful, mm. why? Why? Because it's a heart issue. Yeah. It's a heart issue. Our point, first point there this morning, if you're taking points and you need notes, I know it's a little bit longer. And I'm going to unpack this because if you read this just initially, you're going, man, that's kind of harsh, Aaron. Well, this is why we have to be careful. It says, use your righteousness and you'll use your righteousness. Do you see that? Use your righteousness and you'll get your reward now. Jesus, he says, be careful not to practice your righteousness mm -hmm. in front of others to be seen by them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... If I'm not supposed to use my righteousness, Jesus, if, you may, if you're saying, be careful, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh yeah, Jesus gives us the answer in Matthew 6, 33, doesn't he? But seek first, seek ye first. his kingdom. Uh -huh. And what's the next one? And his righteousness. Stop. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Verse 1, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Yeah. <coughs> it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Jesus goes on to say, in verse 2, So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do. Remember, in that top seven things that people don't come to church, why they don't come to church, remember number two? It said, All the leaders and the people are hypocrites and moral failures. Just in case you were wondering, this is not a country club. This is a hospital. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we need saved. And there's one called Jesus who is the Savior. Amen. Now, some would say he's a Savior. No, I disagree. He is the Savior because Amen. it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anyways, but Jesus says, be careful to be at these hypocrite people, these Pharisees. And it's interesting, he says it in verse 2, he calls out the hypocrites. In verse 5, he says it when we're talking about praying, we talked about that last week. And then even in verse 18, he talks about it in Matthew chapter 6, when we're fasting. He said, don't let everybody and their grandmother know that you're fasting. That's between you and God. Right? Yeah. right? If you want accolades, you'll get your accolades. Oh, great job for fasting, that's so wonderful. Jesus says, there's your reward, Merry Christmas. But if you want a reward that's heavenly, do it in private. Yes. Let everybody and their grandmother know that. Mm -hmm. It says between you and God. It says work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Yes. So, interesting thing. What is this hypocrite? You know, everybody likes to tout that word and say that word, but I was doing a little bit of, of research and, and check this out. A hypocrite is not a person who falls short of his high ideals or who occasionally sins, listen, because all of us experience these failures. Amen? Amen. For all have fallen short of the glory of God, right? Sin and fallen short of God. A hypocrite, listen to this, a hypocrite deliberately uses religion to cover up his sins and promote his own gains. Okay. The word hypocrite comes from a Greek word. I don't know what the Greek word is. Somebody can translate it. But the Greek word translated hypocrite originally meant, now listen to this word, an actor who wears a mask. You missed it. An actor, somebody that's already acting. They're not playing the right part. And they're wearing a mask. Does that make sense? This is why Jesus says, be careful. Be, be very, very careful. Not to practice your righteousness, righteousness so you can be seen by others. So, here's the other thing. Someone would say, well, so we're not supposed to give, Pastor? No, that's not it at all. Jesus did not condemn giving to the needy. needy. He just cautions us to make sure our hearts are right when we do give. David, remember Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a what heart? Amen. It's a heart issue. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast, or some verses even say, a right spirit within me. That seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. That's what that is. 
So that's why Jesus says, be careful. Be careful. Verse 3 goes on to say, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. As I was reading that, I'm thinking, you know, how in the world does that happen? <laughs> do not let your left hand know what you're So I'm going to be giving this to them. Did you know that? <laughs> I'm trying to think, how, how, do you, how do you, what does that mean? I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. And as I was processing, um, here's some of the things that I got um, back from that. It goes back to the intent of the heart. Why? Why am I giving this? Now, someone could say it's about giving to, the, giving to the poor, giving to the needy. It could be. Let me say this. What if it's about serving in our local congregation? Am I serving so that I get the pat on the... Man, they are such an amazing Sunday school teacher. Man, we're so glad that you're on the usher team. Man, we're so glad that you're doing, you're doing this or that, doing that. Or is it because, you know what, for such a time as this, God is wanting me to serve in this area. And so I am going to be a servant leader in this area. We even see that the greatest servant ever, the greatest leader ever, our Savior and Lord, what? He took a towel, he wrapped it around his waist, he knelt down and he washed feet. You don't do that when you're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah you do. Uh-huh. Yeah, you do. That's called servant leadership. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you. I'm going to model to you. I'm going to example to you. This is how you serve. It's a hard issue. It's a hard issue. Am I doing this? So that I can get applause from men, or is it so that God gets the glory. all the glory? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, I kind of just told you what our second point is there. <clears throat> I'm going to give out of obedience. Amen. Now, I know immediately you're thinking, well, I'm going to give money. Could be, it could be. I think Jesus is in. In, in this particular context, he is talking about giving to the needy, but it can be quickly said, what about our time? Mm-hmm. Let me just say this. I, I'm, I'm with everybody else. We are hoarders of our time. Mm-hmm. I'm not giving that to the church. I ain't giving that to y'all. I'm not going to... No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but we give out of obedience. But how do, we know what, how do we know what to give or why we give? But seek first what? His kingdom. So Jesus, what do you have for me? I'd like you to serve in this area. God, are you serious? What are you thinking? I'd like you to serve in this area. I'm all in. I'd like you to give. God, you know what I'm making. That ain't going to happen. I would like you to give this. Okay, we'll do that. I'd like you to step out in some things that are going to scare the Holy Jesus out of you, but know that I am in control of all things. For I know the plans that I have for you, and so if you'll follow me, just watch what will happen. Mm. That's something that the Ferry family is working through right now. My wife and I had a conversation this week, and so um, I had to quickly, my spirit had to quickly say, do you believe I'm in control or not, son? Mm. It's massive, y'all. But do you believe I'm in control or not? I'm surrendering that. I'm surrendering that. So get a, give out of obedience. So immediately you could probably go, oh, so now we're not supposed to give our, our tithes or give to the needy in public. No, no, not necessarily that. Because remember, in Acts chapter 4, we see Barnabas sell, at the very end, the last verse of, of Acts chapter 4, we see Barnabas sell a piece of land and then he brings all of that sale money and he lays it at the apostles' feet. Do you remember that? The very last verse in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 5, when you flip over, what's that story? Ananias and Sapphira. Man, God is just so funny sometimes how he just orchestrates things. Ananias and Sapphira were serving there in the early days of the church. They sold a piece of land. Listen to these words. They brought almost all of the sale of their land, the, the monies there, brought it to the apostles' feet. Immediately, Peter said to them, is this what you guys sold your property for? Ananias said in bold face letters, it, it sure is. It sure is, Pastor. 
Be very careful. Because yeah. what happened to your boy Ananias? He dropped like a lead brick. Right there in the, in the synagogue it says. They pulled him out. In walks his wife. And he said, hey, that's what you guys sold your priest. Peter says, that's what you guys sold your piece of property for? She said, it sure was. And then Peter says these words here. Be careful because the men that just pulled your husband out dead is getting ready to pull you out. Boom, she went down. That's why Jesus says be careful. It's a hard issue. It's a hard issue. Give out of obedience. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm not going to question God, first of all, because he can do whatever he wants to. But, um, you know, if you don't give what you're supposed to, that you're going to drop dead. Um, but I don't want to live in disobedience. So there could, it may not be physically dropping dead. It could be some disobedience, which leads in other areas, which then you get into a whirlwind of things that you don't need to be getting into. Our sinful nature is so subtle. Going back to Ananias and Sapphira, if you need proof of that, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. <laughs> just be sitting down when you read that story, because, man, you see the power. Someone say, man, that's just so, um, that's so um, intense. No, that's the power of the Almighty God is what Amen. that is. Amen. Do not question Him. Our sinful nature is so subtle, one commentator says, that it can defile even a good thing. It can defile even a good thing. If our motive is to get the praise of men, like the Pharisees, we were talking about that whole hypocrite thing, we will call attention to what we are doing. Look what I'm doing. I've served in Sunday school for 25 years. Okay, is, is that what you're wanting? Is that we, you, you've served? Or is it the lives that are touched? By you and what Jesus is doing in you cannot be numbered. That, that's a reward. Not a plaque. Now, I mean, we want to recognize you, yes. If you serve for 25 years in that, and we love that. That's amazing. But is it simply so that, look what I did? There's your reward on this side of heaven. That's it. When you get to heaven, and we don't we want to hear those words? Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in, Jesus says. Enter in. Versus, I, I'm so sorry. Thanks for serving, but I, I don't even know what your name is. In my opinion, those are the worst words ever to be uttered. Depart from me, for I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. Please, Jesus, please, Jesus, help me with that. I'll get through this quote, I promise. Um, we will call attention to what we are doing, but if our motive is to serve God in love and please Him, then when, then we will give our gifts without calling attention to them. Here it is. As a result of my giving out of obedience and out of a clean heart, as it says, David says, as a result, we will grow spiritually, God will be glorified, and others will be helped. Yes. Amen. 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 But, if we give with the wrong motive, we rob ourselves of blessing and reward, blessing and reward, and rob God of glory. <laughs> I don't want to rob God of glory. That's going to be a bad day for somebody. And rob God of glory, even though the money we share might help a needy person. Now that's just saying that God is still God because He can be glorified even in things that are unclean. Because we, there's all kinds of places in Scripture we see that. But I want to make sure that God gets the glory in who I am. Amen. I know you're probably going, wow, Pastor, you got that out of giving, giving to the needy? I did. Because Jesus says, be careful. What does your heart look like? Mm -hmm. And am I giving out of obedience? Am I serving out of obedience? Am I giving to my local church out of obedience? Or is it out of, oh gosh, i got to write that dumb tithe check again. Mm -hmm. Doesn't God know what I could do with that money? Mm -hmm. Let me just say this. God does not need your money. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. He does not need your money. But he does want our obedience. Yes. Because then he looks and says, that's faithfulness right there. Right. You want an example? That's faithfulness right there. That's faithfulness with a little, so I'm going to give you much. God's economics makes no sense on earth. Makes no sense. 
What do you mean I give five dollars and that can go and feed twenty-five children? I don't know. What do you mean I'm going to be when I give just a little bit? God is going to see that. What about the widow's mite? What about that story? I don't know, but I guarantee you, when she entered heaven, she heard those words: "Well done, Amen. my daughter, good and faithful servant." So this morning. I ask all of us, man, I'm telling you right now, and you guys think, wow, that pastor, that's good. No, I've been chewing on that for a week, so welcome to my world. It's been hard. But I know that there are things that God is, I'm having a little bit of a Jacob moment. So y'all can pray for your boy up here. Because he's wrestling with some big things in God, with God. And I hope you are as well. I hope you're not just content, oh God, it's good. God is good. God is good. But even in the good, there's going to be discipline. And I don't mean discipline from the old spanking network. Or, or uh, what's the word? Not network. Why did I say network? Um, idea. Remember, discipline is a gardening term. All you gardeners, when you um, plant your tomato plant, tomato plants can go rogue really quick. They just grow off, go over there somewhere. But you're disciplining when you put that stake in the ground and you tie that plant up. You're saying, hey, I want you to go this way because you'll be fruitful that way. Mm -hmm. Because if you're laying on the ground and you grow fruit, something's going to eat it. It's going to rot. Somebody's going to get stepped on it and be, you know, uh, run over by the mower. That's not the point of it. It's to, it's, uh, the point of a tomato plant is to produce fruit. So let's get that thing up so it's disciplining this direction so that you can be fruitful and multiply. Amen. That's what God's talking about. Mm -hmm. Not whacking you over the head with a two by four. He's saying, son, daughter, get in alignment with what I'm trying to show you here. Get up out of bed early in the morning and get in my word. I've got something for you. Pastor Katie said that. There's manna. There's fresh bread for today. Remember the manna in, in, uh, with the Israelites? It was only good for that day, right? Because what happened? It rotted. There was new bread the following morning. Then you get the scripture from Limitations. Great, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yeah. You see where God's word is alive and well? Yes. And that's what he wants to speak into our own hearts and into our own lives. So be careful. Be careful not to use your own righteousness. But as all of you have said, be, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. So Jesus, as we have unpacked your scripture, we know that it has to be right because it's your word. It has to be true because it's your word. Sometimes, Jesus, it's hard. But Father, you give life. You are life. You give hope. You are hope. To each and every one of us. And so Father as, we, as we've listened. As we've taken in your word. As we allow your spirit to move inside of our own hearts and our own lives. God we just take these next few moments and we just pause. And we say we declare you are Lord. And Father we worship you. We praise you. We thank you. We bless your name. Father, we choose to submit to the purpose that you have for us. We're just going to give a few moments here. And if you want to come and pray at the altar, you're more than welcome to. Could be something that you heard this morning. Could be something else that you're dealing with. But just know that we have um, pastors here and we have altar workers here that want to pray with you. Who are prayed up themselves. That want to just simply speak God's truth and God's word into you and into your life. So stand together, church family, and we're just going to sing a couple of verses just very, very quickly, and then we'll close. But if you want to come, I encourage you to do that. And again, we're going to sing, and not just sing, but we're going to declare those words that were written so many years ago. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like mine. 
so prompted right now for this but Jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice right now who has never said I, I've never asked Jesus into my heart and life Father I just pray for them right now that even they would come that they would not feel shame, ashamed that there would be no doubt in their heart we, we rebuke the enemy who would love to just say you know what you don't need to go up there you don't need to pray that prayer you're fine you're in church Father you did not call good people or people that go to church you said that we must be saved. Oh, yes. Father, and it's, again, it says that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so, God, that's the only way. And so, Father, I just pray that even if there's someone here this morning, God, even if they've been coming to this church for years and decades and have never said, Jesus, I confess my sins to you. I need you to be Lord and Savior of my life. God, I pray that today that will be the present that they unwrap today. So we just pray that. Yes. We pray that, Jesus, for that person. Those persons maybe today. I don't know. Father, may they know that they are loved. Oh, God, are they loved. And Jesus, you have so much purpose for them. If we'll surrender, if they'll surrender their life to you. And so, Lord, maybe they don't want to do that in public. Maybe they want to do that in private. So if they would find one of the pastors here or somebody else and just say, hey, no, Pastor Aaron said, I, I, I need to pray that prayer. That's for me. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we just ask that your spirit would move in a mighty way. Oh, yes, Lord. God, maybe there's someone in this room who prayed that prayer a long time ago, but mm, Jesus has slipped away. And there's just been, there's been several years or even decades of just walking away. But, Father, they have come home. The prodigal has come home, Jesus, and now you are there ready to embrace them, to put the coat on, to put the ring on their finger, to kill the fatted calf, and we're going to have a party because they come home, Jesus. I pray that today as well. Father, that every person would know we just simply walk into the king's throne. We say, Jesus, you, you know, you know what's been going on. It wasn't right. And so I confess that to you, and I need to say, you have to be, you have to be Jesus, Lord and Savior of my life. So Father, I pray that for anyone in this room as well. Jesus, we thank you for your word that's gone through. God, your word through song, your word through gathering together, your word through the scripture as well. And so, Lord, we just, we thank you. We bless your name. Uh, that song that we sang on Wednesday night, God, you are a good, good father. It's who you are. You can't be anything else, Jesus. Because then you'd violate the last 5,000 years of being God. And you're not going to start now with that. So, God, you are good. You are faithful. You are sure. You are right. You are true. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you, God. Jesus. Reminded, Father, even of those that think, well, not right now. Oh, not in Philippians when it says that every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus, you are Lord. And so, God, we're just going to go ahead and declare that now. That you are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. 
Lord, you are Savior. Because God, why else would we call you a Savior if we didn't need save from anything? So Jesus, you are Lord. You are Savior. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we worship you, we thank you, we bless your holy name. We say, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. God, it is a joy, it is an honor, it's a privilege to join with the angels as they sing those words around your throne, night and day, day and night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Father, we worship you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. Yes. We are excited, God, to see what you're going to show us this week in your word yes, as we Lord. dive into yes. it. Yes. What new things, God, do you have for us? Yes, yes God, we know the enemy's going to come right after us. Yes. But, oh, God, we are more than conquerors. Oh, yes. Him who loved us, hallelujah to your name. Oh, yes. We put the enemy on high alert. Jesus is Lord of this place. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. As for me and my house, we will yes. serve the Lord. Yes. That is a non-negotiable. Yes. Not up for discussion. So enemy, bring it. We know that our God is mightier. We know that our God is Savior. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the Prince of Peace. And we worship and submit to Him. Father, thank you for your work here today. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Yes. We praise your holy name. Oh, yes, there is no other name but the oh, name of yes, Jesus. Lord. The name of Jesus. Yes, yes. The wonderful name of Jesus. Yes, the powerful, you. the healing name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. It's in his name we ask all these things. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Wow. What an awesome, awesome day to be together in the house of the Lord. I want to encourage you to uh, come on Wednesday night. Man, there's some powerful things going on on Wednesday night. Um, and so come and be a part of that. Uh, Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. here in this room. And uh, we would love to see you there. And then, of course, also next Saturday we have prayer. And then next Sunday, hallelujah, we've got a special treat for you. It's going to be a good time. Do not, whatever you do, even if you have your leg missing, just bring it with you. Come to church next Sunday. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time and, uh, as we worship together. And, um, Seek his face in all of we are. So all of you that have resolu uh, New Year's Re resolution that you're going to eat well, I guess, uh, there are cupcakes for everyone um, in the fellowship hall. So as you make your way out, if you want to grab a cupcake, we would love for you to do that. So that way they don't all go home with us. Appreciate that so much. All right, stand together. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord make His face to shine upon you and give you His peace. Amen, amen. 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 To someone next to you, say, I'm so glad I got to be with you, and then you are